hello and welcome to the latest roundup of news and polls from Ipsos in the UK. Boris Johnson faced a confidence vote in Parliament this week, which saw 41% of his own MPs saying they'd lost faith in him. 54% of the British public now think his government is doing a bad job at running the country, and that's up five points since we last polled it back in early May. But even before that vote on Monday, six in ten in the public would say that they supported Boris Johnson resigning as Prime Minister, only one in five would oppose. But important here to look at how the opposition are faring, because the public are equally split on whether Keir Starmer would do a better or worse job, and only one in three in the British public would say they believe that Labour are ready to form a government. So how does Boris Johnson and Keir Starmer, how do they compare on some of the key leadership attributes that we would want from a Prime Minister? Well, Starmer leads Johnson on honesty, judgment and understanding the problems facing Britain. But Johnson still leads Starmer on having a lot of personality, being good in a crisis and being patriotic. On what people trust from the parties, so the Labour Party are more trusted than Conservatives to reduce cost of living and to manage Britain's tax and public spending. But neither party is trusted by a majority and there's clearly more work to be done for both parties to convince the public that they have the right answers to the issues the public care most about. And what do they care most about? Well, it is inflation and prices. Our issues index this month has found that public concern about inflation is now at a 40-year maximum, with 4 in 10 people telling us that cost of living issues are the top concern, up 9 points from last month. The other three top issues, the economy, defence and foreign affairs, etc., remaining at a similar sort of level to last month. But just have a look at lack of faith in politics and politicians. Still up there in the top numbers and up by five percentage points since April. Moving on, it's clear that the public want more support around cost of living. So almost half saying the UK government are not helping people enough through the cost of living crisis. But note it did fall since we polled this in early May. So some of those recent measures announced by the Chancellor Rishi Sunak to tackle the issue may have an impact here on how people feel. But despite this, when we look at his own ratings and how he's performing, they're still very split on whether he's doing a good job as Chancellor. And whilst the cost of living crisis so far has really focused on the issues around food and energy prices, we are seeing an increase in people's concern around rent and mortgage repayments and how that will have an additional squeeze on households. In 2020, three in 10 in the British public said they were very or fairly worried about paying the rent or mortgage in the next 12 months. But that proportion has really grown now to 55%. So moving on and having a look at other things that are happening, we've just finished a weekend of celebrations for the Jubilee. Um, I'm sure you've all been watching uh, as Prince Louis stole the heart of a nation and certainly of my eight year old daughter. But we looked at public opinion in advance of that around the royal family. And unsurprisingly, the Queen remains Britain's favourite royal and eight and ten are satisfied now with the way she's doing her job. Politicians would kill for ratings like the Queen. And whilst the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge closely follow her in their population, uh, in their popularity ratings, the Queen definitely is still the apple of the public eye. And she's seen as a, a traditional and positive symbol of Britain at home and abroad. The Prince of Wales, as we've seen, come more to the fore and taking on more official responsibilities. And in terms of the public's perspective, half expect Prince Charles to do a good job as king. And the expectations for Prince William are even higher, with three quarters thinking he will be a successful monarch. And despite favourable ratings for both, two thirds say the Queen should remain in her position for as long as possible. Again, a statement many of our politicians would avidly court. Elsewhere, two years after George Floyd's murder, we've looked at how companies have changed their approach to race related issues in the workplace. And our latest data published with the Financial Times shows that although it alerted employers to identifying ways to improve race relations, it really hasn't yet been translated into sustained and impactful actions for workers. Many workers, especially those from ethnic minority backgrounds, continue to experience microaggressions at work, which highlights that employers still have some way to go to create diverse and inclusive workplaces. In other news, uh, I've recently been awarded an MBE in the Queen's Birth, the Honours List, so it's not a surprise she's also my favourite, uh, for services to academia, research and the COVID-19 response. But it's lovely to receive the MBE, a real big honour, but not, not just for me, for the whole research industry and the impact that it can have on society, especially in response to the pandemic. So a really massive thanks to Her Majesty the Queen, but also everyone at Ipsos who stands behind that 
uh, honour with their incredible commitment and hard work. And finally, our Global Trustworthiness Monitor has found that almost 3 in 10 think the banking sector is trustworthy versus 2 in 10 in 2018, so improving for our bankers. And it places that sector as the third most trustworthy industry globally behind tech and pharma. You can find much more and this on our website, so please do have a look at ipsos.com forward slash en dash UK. Thank you.